Hello, I'm back with chapters five and the conclusion, chapter six. Vam Vampire. I was so frightened I couldn't move. My vocal cords even froze. I, I was unable to scream. What are you doing here, kid? Vampire had a soft, hissing kind of voice. I needed a clever reply, and, and I needed it fast. I... I, I wanted to visit my grandmother's grave, and uh, I guess I guess I'm just in the wrong place. Your grandmother is buried in the cemetery. Well, well, no, I I must have come uh, to uh, the wrong cemetery too. He started growling. I was completely startled, especially by the sharp and threatening tongue that moved between his lips. It had the texture of an ink blotter. And look, look again at the letters on his parchment skin. The ink drinker. You followed me from the bookstore, kid. Why? Well, well, well there, I felt like, well, there's no point in lying anymore. I, I was sure that he could read my thoughts. Well, I... You drank a book with a straw. I saw you. Uh, <laughs> now I understand. You're a foolish kid. You know who I am? Uh, a vam va a vampire? Indeed. <laughs> you were lucky that after five centuries of fine dining on blood, I became allergic to the stuff. Otherwise, <gasps> and I, I did not dare to think about what he meant by otherwise. Uh, wh wh why do you drink ink, sir? I asked. Well, I suffered from liver problems for 72 years. Ink's the only food I can digest without difficulty. And believe it or not, ink is really quite nutritious. Really? Then, but then, why not just buy bottles full of ink? You could keep a refrigerator stocked with them right here in your little pantry crypt. It would be a lot easier. Not possible, kid. Bottled ink is as bland as salt-free food. But ink that is aged on paper, well, it's, it's like the ultimate gourmet dish. Simply sublime. Hmm. I frowned. You don't believe me? Oh, no, 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 I do, I do. I started to, to back away. No, no, you don't believe me. Never mind. Like it or not, you too will develop a taste for ink. Tomorrow, you will understand. He sprang like a devil out of his casket and smiled. His dazzling teeth looked like razor-sharp pen nibs. And he was coming closer and closer. I felt the dark veil descending slowly upon me. Look at this tiny picture of the nib of the pen, the eyes and mouth. It is a dark little tale. Chapter six, yum, delicious. What? Vampires don't exist. No one drinks a glass of blood for breakfast. And people sure don't suck ink with a straw. I hate these freaky nightmares. They, they, they make me jittery. I'd fallen asleep in my hiding spot. The bookstore was about to close. Two customers were still lingering over there in the aisles. A strong itch on my arm woke me up. What was that? And, and as I tried to get rid of the itch, I realized that it was something, something coming from deep under my skin. To make sure I had been dreaming, I, I browsed through a few books and Everything was in order. All the, the books were jam-packed with words. I took a good look. I returned to my hiding spot, and I felt all of a sudden just overwhelmed. It was an indescribable mix of drowsiness and, and heavy, heaviness. I heard my dad double-lock the store door. I was alone at last. The surrounding silence and darkness were, were, were somehow ex exhilarating all of a sudden. I, 
Dad hadn't realized I was still inside the store. And I was sure that once he did, he would search for me. But I had better things to do than go home to bed. I'm sure you'll agree. The books all neatly lined up were calling me. Come, come and open us. Come, come and open us. It was the very first time I had craved a book. Come, come and browse through us. Come. And I just happened to have a straw in my pocket. Lucky me. The first mouthful was absolutely electrifying. However strange it may seem, I was eating sentences and crunching paragraphs. The books, well, they tasted like brownies. No, honest. But even more astounding, the sensations on my tongue varied from word to word, from paragraph to paragraph. I wasn't simply absorbing ink. I was absorbing pure and total adventure. On a wild sea, two ships waged a ruthless battle. Crash! With swords between their teeth, the pirates smiled ferociously. I was not reading. I was experiencing all the action firsthand. I was the captain of the king's ship, and I was fighting for my life. Suddenly, I found myself facing a devil with an eye patch and a wooden leg. It was the notorious Captain Flint. We lunged at each other with our swords. I was exhausted, truly, truly. My arms felt like jelly. In a last-ditch effort, I rushed toward my enemy. He dodged my attack, and I went overboard. As I sucked, the first words of the second paragraph, the lights were suddenly turned on. Dad was there. I swallowed wrong. And the words got stuck in my throat. Time for bed, little rascal. How did you manage? He didn't understand what I was doing with the book. You're supposed to read some books, my dear, not chew them. When he noticed the straw and the ink that was dripping down my chin, his anger oh, subsided. Did a, did, did, did a dog bite you? Well, n no, n not exactly. He must have feared I had rabies or something. I mean, I reassured him, claiming the ink was just chocolate. And he believed me. Still, he wasn't totally wrong. I had indeed been bitten, but not by a dog. When I had passed out in the crypt, the vampire had used his nib-like teeth to carve his name onto my arm. Draculink! I was now one of his kind. I had become an ink drinker. And for the first time in my life, I relished being the son of a bookstore owner. And that is the tale of the ink drinker. You know how they have these parts at the back called about the author? I've got to redo this. Eric Savoisi is one bizarre writer. Uh, you probably will agree. Using a straw, he loves to suck the ink from all the fan letters he receives. That's what inspired him to write this story. And he's sure that just as there are blood brothers and blood sisters everywhere, everyone who reads this book will become his ink brother or ink sister. Now, apparently, if you write to him, he will send you a straw. That's a promise. Or else he won't be writing again, anytime soon. C'est tout. Fini. The end of Le Vouveur d'Encre.
the ink drinker. I hope you enjoyed that. Good night.